Okay, so we broke down two candidates not rocking with capitalism as usual. But question, what's the feasibility of socialism ever actually winning in America in the first place? Let's start with what a president can actually do. To be honest, it's very limited. They have the power to approve or veto what Congress decides, which means we need to choose humane Congress members. And foremost. Coincidentally, that happens the same time as presidential elections. What the going kidding? Your cue to most importantly choose non capitalist local officials and Congress members. But back to the powers of the president. Here's the clincher they can sign executive orders, which is what Cornell was alluding to using. This basically means the because I say so card that any president can use. Now, this is big, y'all. Historically, these have been used in a number of ways, and, and no one can stop them from using them once in office. Unless, like, the Supreme Court intervenes, which is another reason we need a radical president to appoint more radical Supreme Court justices and get those old capitalist gatekeepers out of that. Hmm. Plus, the president is also commander-in-chief, which means they get to direct the military. Now, that's a big deal and why their international policies matter. But let's also remember again that we are in a capitalist state, y'all, which means big money have made it extremely hard for humane candidates to get on the ballot. This means there are a lot of hoops across, which requires lots of money and resources to get on the ballot. And even then, they're intentionally left out of national presidential debates and national corporate-run media. That's because capitalists typically evade any form of accountability to actual democracy just not their MO, you know? But with hard work, Claude and Corn have made the official ballot on these states. But that's over 40 states that are not yet on the ballot for. What does this mean? Fear not, there is such a thing as a write-in. This means you can handwrite their names on your selection ballot. Only these states have blocked people from being able to write in presidential candidates. Okay, so how and why could they do that? Um, yeah, well, the same way Jim Crow swept the country to prevent black people from voting in national elections. Yeah, corruption. But luckily, Claude and Corn each work to make it on the ballot for two out of those eight. Okay, so now let's talk plausibility. What are the chances of a write-in candidate winning the presidential election? Coming up next.